Okay, what else do you look at? So uh, positioning and risk reward are the other two. So positioning, now we look at prime brokerage data, which not everybody uh, who, who's watching this can access, but I think the, the simplest measure we like to use is the AAII sentiment survey. I think it's really bulletproof and it's been around for more than 30 years. This is for positioning? For positioning, yes. Okay. And it's a contrarian signal. When the AAII bulls less bears is extreme negative, so minus 20 percentage points or worse, 100% of the time, it's a buy signal six months out. Okay, because the market tends to trade higher and then the people that had gotten bearish end up chasing it up. Yeah, that's right, because when people are bearish and so sentiment's really negative, they've likely sold. So that's the consensus view and therefore good news can be good news. Okay, so how often do you get an extreme reading in something like the AAII poll? It's a two sigma, so meaning you'll get it every uh, 50 weeks or every 20 to 50 weeks. So yeah, and that's a free data source. They just publish it. Yeah, they I publish find it that weekly. remarkable. Yeah. So far in this series, we've been able to make predictions in the markets without using indicators. However, that's not to say that indicators aren't useful. When using indicators that are outside of the price itself, there can be edge. Let's begin. So I hope you enjoyed the series on predicting the markets. I found it fascinating researching all of this and we're not quite done yet. I wanted to just share something with you in terms of a very interesting indicator that I did find, which has nothing to do with price. Uh, it's a sentiment indicator. It's called the AAII uh, Sentiment Survey. And so AAII essentially stands for the American Association of Individual Investors. And you can almost think of this as a contrarian indicator. In other words, there's a survey that goes out and I believe that the data and the results are published weekly. And essentially what the survey shows is whether investors are bullish, bearish or neutral. And so one of the things I wanted to try was, you know, if I if we look at the change in the investor sentiment, both on the bullish, the neutral, the bearish side or across all three, does that have any impact into predicting whether the price of the S&P will actually be up or down the following week? So this is not the following day. This is looking at the following week. And actually, the results were pretty interesting. I'm going to tell you right now, you're not going to get rich from watching this video, so don't get too excited. <laughs> but the results were very interesting and definitely worth noting and knowing. You know, I came across the survey just watching uh, a gentleman from JP Morgan doing an interview on YouTube. And I thought it'd be very interesting to take this and plug it into the model. For those of you who are keen to get the data, you can either download it directly from here or even more simply, there's a website called Quandle where you can actually get it for free. And most of the, most of the data I use for testing outside of the you know normally available stock data, I pay for. It costs money. Uh, but this is something that is free and very easy to get and actually, I believe, quite a useful indicator to a degree. So the AAII, if we look at it on a chart versus the S&P, and I had to actually Google this, I didn't really feel like bringing, um, pulling together charts, etc. But I wanted to show you there are, there's a lot of analysis on Google images around the AAII as an, in, as an indicator. And very often it's used as a contrarian indicator. So if everybody's getting extremely bullish, that's potentially a good time to short. Or if everyone's getting extremely bearish, that's a good time to go long. And so if you look here, here's an interesting chart. The black line is the S&P 500. The red line is this AAII survey. So here we can see that the bearish, you know, sort of pops, uh, pops up just before the market rallies. So everybody's getting super bearish round about here. Uh, they continue to stay bearish. The market does drop, but then shortly after it ramps up. Interestingly, on the bullish side, you can see that there were far fewer bulls. The market continued to decline over here, but in, in the same period, there was a change in sentiment. So you can see that the bulls changed over. They became you know, more bullish, but it's very, very interesting. You can see when things spike, typically a change happens. Now be very careful looking at a chart retrospectively because it's very easy to find patterns and actually we're probably just fooling ourselves. But you know, if research analysts at JP Morgan are looking at the survey as a longer term indicator, I thought it would be very interesting if we looked at it 
and put it into our machine learning model, which is what we're actually about to go and do now. We're gonna put it through the XGBoost algorithm, which you all know is probably my favorite algorithm right now. I, I love it, I think it's very useful. We're gonna put it through there and we're gonna say, okay, let's look at the change week on week uh, with the neutral, the bullish, the bearish, etc. And let's see, based on that change in sentiment, if that can predict whether stocks will be up or down the following week. and. We're going to do that now and I think you're going to find the results kind of cool. So as usual, if you've seen the previous videos, you don't need to worry too much about what we're doing here, but we're essentially going to prepare for this algorithm. So right now we've pulled the Yahoo Finance data for the S&P 500 on the SPY. We've pulled the AAII data directly from Quandle and we've also calculated a change on that data. So rather than looking at the actual numbers of the survey, we're looking at the change week on week, purely because that actually makes the model somewhat more useful. Uh, you can see the, the details here to actually pull this from Condal. If you do use Python, you know, make sure you, you use your own API key. Don't bother uh, using my one over here. Otherwise, I'm going to have headaches I have to deal with. Anyway, I can't be bothered to gray this out or whatever. So I'll trust that you'll do that. And then over here, we're going to join the two data sets together. So we're now taking the SPY, joining it with the AAII data set. And now we're going to have a look at what that data looks like. So we've got a snapshot of the data. We've got our open, high, low, close. We've got like seven day increments here uh, between the data points because the survey is weekly. So we're looking at this week to week. And now what we're going to do is calculate what the outcome should be. And we're going to have a look at this down here. So if I scroll to the right, a zero means that the close price went down and a one means that the close price went up. So for example, here, close to close, it went from 144 to 140, that's down, that's why that's zero. Here it went from 140 to 143, that's why this one over here is one. So the outcome is what we're going to feed into the machine learning model, and it's gonna split this data between training and test sets of data. So it's not going to know when it's uh, testing it on the test set, what the outcome should have been, it's going to be blind, and it's going to have to try to predict. And what our algorithm is going to do is mark how accurate was that prediction, really. So that's what we're going to go and run through over here. Now the column headings I'm going to use are the neutral change, the log return and the volume change. The reason I'm running just neutral, um, instead of, you know, bullish and or bearish, etc, is I've actually run all of these through the model and the neutral change is actually the most useful indicator for this. So we're going to go and push that through. So you can see the columns we have on neutral change, the log return, which is essentially just the close over close, uh, and the volume change as well, which is essentially volume over volume. In fact, if I show you uh, somewhere here, you can see I'm taking the log of the close and dividing it by the previous day's log of the close. And here I'm taking the log of the volume and dividing it by the previous day's log of the volume. If you're not too sure why I'm using log, maybe just go back and watch some of the previous videos or ask in the comments, I'll be happy to explain it to you. So now we've got all of that and we need to run XGBoost. So that's what we're gonna go and do now. We're gonna go and split our data between training and test data. We're gonna pump this into the algorithm and it's really not gonna take very long to run. In fact, it's done. And so if you remember from the previous videos, we said that we need over a 53% probability in our favor or a 53% accuracy in our favor. That's because the market has been going up. One of the folk on the channel had actually posted a really good comment to say that it's the market are like stairs. You know, if you had just bet on up, you would have come out on top. But you know, when things go down, they go down more heavily. The market doesn't crash upwards is, is the correct saying. So we needed more than a 53% edge because that means that we essentially now have probability in our favor. And actually this model comes out with a 56% accuracy, which is great because technically speaking, that means we have a 3% edge. Now take this with a pinch of salt because it has a 4% standard deviation. So that could either be worst case 52% accuracy, meaning 1% worse than having an edge, or it could be, you know, even better. It could be 60%, meaning that things are really in your favor. So if you if you round all of that off, you're really looking at a 56% accuracy, meaning that the change in sentiment does have some kind of impact, or at least we can say, based on what we can see here, it's likely that the change in sentiment on the AAII survey 
does actually have some kind of impact as to direction, as to whether the market might go up or down. Now, this might need further testing. I find it very interesting for any data scientists watching this. Please take a look at this and let me know in the comments or let me know via email what you find if you're able to flush this into some kind of predictive model and if you see any positive results out of it. However, I thought it was certainly something worth pointing out because this indicator has really absolutely nothing to do with the price itself. Uh, most indicators are price lagging and therefore, as we proved in previous videos, absolutely useless when it comes to predictive modeling. But this indicator seems to have some kind of benefit to it. Anyhow, until the next video, take care. Thanks for watching and talk soon. Okay, and then what was the last one? Uh, risk reward, which is probably the simplest way to measure that? it is, is, is the VIX. Okay. So uh, the VIX, which everyone is very familiar with because they know when it's going up, there's a lot of fear. But it's really measuring the cost of term premium for an option. Uh, it's implied volatility. Okay. And so when it's rising, then you know there's a lot of fear because people are trying to buy protection. So for this audience, the VIX rising uh, signifies people who are essentially buying insurance against the stocks they own in their portfolio or against the overall market. Yeah. Okay. And there's a little twist to the VIX, which is uh, using the VIX futures, which anyone can still access even through Yahoo. Uh, but you know, the VIX has contracts expiring one month all the way through 12 months forward. Okay. If you see the price of a one month contract above the four month, that means people are more fearful of things in the next month versus four months out. Okay. So it's an inverted curve. And that's gotta be, that's gotta be very encouraging if you're looking for an opportunity to buy. Correct, it's only happened seven times since 2009. I was gonna say, that sounds like it would be a really rare occurrence. Yeah, and we had one when this year. When does that happen, like around elections or around things that seem like they might have a binary outcome? Correct. Exactly, okay. uh, so you could have, it, it could happen around Brexit, it could happen around elections, it right. could happen around uh, trade tensions. It happened this year and we use that as a signal to tell our clients that a tradable bottom was in.